All right, hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice is coming good. Please uh, share the link with your friends and invite them and let us do the good work for today. Now, I hope that we will reach the 10,000 at least uh, view before we come to the second video in order to make me come really, uh, you know, I need to see that really people are watching the videos. But if somebody, I mean, still we have law in, in view, well, I will let it there until we reach enough number because we want people really to watch it and to see this is the purpose of what we do. So please don't forget to share. If you like us to come back as soon as possible, then we have to make it go more popular. Uh, in the front of me in the screen, we have a Muslim, a Muhammadan. Uh, he posted a comment as the following. His name is Faisal Hussein. He said, when I was small, I used to read Quran. And I think, how can God be so cruel and punish people in such deadly hell? Then as I grow up, I realized how bad people can be. May Allah guide these disbelievers. May Allah give them knowledge to think deeply, feel so sorry for those people if they only knew. And here I find it very funny when he said at the end, if he only if they only knew. Supposedly he knew. You know the funny we mentioned million times the Muslims do not even know who's Allah. Their prophet never spoke to Allah, never saw Allah, never heard of something called Allah, except from people who before him, the Arab, they keep saying Allah. If we ask a Muslim who is Allah, they do not know. Oh, what they say is God, but who is who is Allah? You see, if I ask you who is a nurse, you don't don't say to me it's a nurse. You tell me who is this nurse. Who is this Allah? Same time, when you say to me, when I was a small, I used to read the Quran, I think how God can be cruel and punish people for in such a deadly hell. hell. Then I grow and realized how people can be uh, bad. But don't you know that Allah is the one who made people bad? So let us analyze your, your knowledge or your logic. Allah punish us for we are bad. But Allah made us bad if what the reason for the punishment is being bad. Muslims, they are the last one to know what their book is teaching. I never saw a Muslim, by the way, he understands what he's talking about. And the proof is just in the front of us. A Muslim is not even allowed to pray for non-Muslims. When you say, may Allah guide you, this is against Islam. This is against Islam. You can say, may Allah guide us as a Muslims, but not for the kuffar. And I will prove it to you from your Quran. Let us go to the Quran and see first who is Allah and what Allah he do. Allah, according to Islam, he is, a, he is Satan himself. If we go in the Quran, there's tons of verses in front of us, you know. All of them saying that it's Allah will to make us bad. It's Allah will to make us deceived. It's Allah will to make it to make us uh, uh, divided. It's Allah will to make us fighting. It's Allah will to make us kill each other. It's Allah will. An example, chapter four, verse number ninety. And you can change the translator, by the way, because all translation made by Muslims is a fabrication just to to, to protect Islam. You will see here, Allah saying, supposedly, Allah, Akka Muhammad, uh, it's Allah who might cause people to attack you. Allah, if Allah will, he could make them assault you. This is, had Allah willed, he could have given them power over you so that can assuredly they they would have fought you it's Allah will so even if somebody attack you it's Allah will to attack you 
War and peace happen by the will of Allah. People kill each other because Allah He decided you, you, you go and kill this one. Chapter 2, verse number 253. Read with me and love. And if Allah had so willed it, they would not have fought one with another. So this is Allah will. This is not against Allah will. This is Allah will. If Allah will, you see, when he, when he said to you, if Allah will, simply he's telling you what Allah will is. So if Allah will, they will not ever fight. So what happened then? Well, Allah, Allah will is to fight. <laughs> You know what I mean? So how you say to me, may Allah guide you? You know, every every evil thing happened in this earth happened by the will of Allah, according to your to you Muslims. For those who do not know, Muslims do not believe in free decision, free will. Everything is the will of Allah. Your life, your death, your wealth, your are your deeds you're bad you are good you are a believer disbeliever everything is by the will of Allah so how you say to me may Allah guide you if he if Allah he himself is the one who misguide me are you fooling yourself why you don't curse Allah and say how Allah why you made those people not to believe actually this is mentioned in the Quran in other verses it says clearly that it is Allah will to make us not to believe <laughs> as an example as an example if we go to chapter uh, 6, verse number 35, read carefully with me. You can read the whole verse, which the translation is funny, but for me, this is what is important. If Allah willed, he could have brought them all together to guide <laughs> this. I mean, this is a joke. So you are saying we are bad. But obviously, it is Allah who's by. Okay, why Allah He don't want to? Why why He don't have the will to uh, to brought us together in guidance? Hmm? There's any Abdul in the chat? I want to go to guidance. All those people you see them, the Christians, the Hindus, the Jews, etc. They want to come to guidance. This why everything, every one of them, he think that he uh, he's right. They are not atheists. You see. If you are talking to an atheist, maybe, eh, maybe. But even in the case of the atheist here, it says even though he will bring him to guidance if he will. So why he don't will? I mean, what's wrong with this Allah? Bring us to guidance. I am not against that. So you say to me, if Allah will. And then I will be punished. I will go to hell. But yet Allah did not will. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, guys? You see, you see the the the, the crazy about this uh, the, the this cult. Uh, okay, Roy, thank you. I'm glad for your friends. You see, guys, the 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 madness. It's it's like you know. Uh, I will punish you because it's my will that you will not believe in me. You know what I mean? I mean, who is the stupid here? I will send you to hell because you don't believe in me and it is my will that you will not believe in me. Muhammad, Muhammad as a person, I find him the most silly. You know, like people, they... they they might say you sometimes you use aggressive words, you know, like uh, you don't respect. Why do you want to respect stupidity? I don't respect stupidity. This is stupid. And look, two verses after the Muslim, they say to us, The Quran is a miracle. The Quran is a miracle. Look at this. They say to you, because you are a foreign person who don't speak Arabic. They say to you, the Quran is the most amazing miracle, brother. Brother, okay, re read with me. Here we go. This is what the Arab said to Muhammad in, during his time. The Arab, they did not say the Quran is a miracle. This is why they keep asking him for a miracle. They say, why has not portent been sent down to him? I mean, this tr translation is, is garbage. Let me change the translator. What portent? A miracle. I mean, this guy is a stupid idiot. Sometimes I lose my patience with those translators. 
it's like uh, somebody is suffering from uh, too much alcohol why why is not a sign sent down to him from his Lord so what the Arab asking what is okay he claimed to be a prophet it, it talk is cheap I mean this is very legitimate if somebody came to me and he said I am prophet should I believe him right away okay he can say to me Allah I will already start for you something is called Quran Hey, Bismillah, Allahman, Allahim, Shish Kebab, Amin. Okay, Hummus, Fa, 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 Ta, 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 Okay, and why you don't have a miracle? All prophets before you, they have miracle. Look what Allah said to them. Say, Allah certainly able to send down a sign, but most of them know not. What the heck? What the point of the miracle if nobody knows it? Say Allah certainly is able to send down a miracle. I mean, this is the answer they are waiting for from you. So we ask the guy, okay, if you are a prophet, why your God don't support you with miracles? The Muslim they say, Isa have miracles. Isa have millions of miracles according to Islam. Why Allah cannot give Muhammad one miracle, just one? I mean, come on. The Muslim they say to us, don't you know that the moon split? Even the even that stupid miracle in the Quran is not exist. The Quran itself com confirmed that the Quran says the judgment day is near and the moon split. This is a miracle of Muhammad. No, the Quran is saying that this is a sign of judgment. This is not the son of Muhammad. And by the way, this is a chapter Al, -Al Qamar, the moon. Proving Muhammad to be a false prophet because he said the judgment day is near and nothing happened and there's no moon split it was an eclipse silly prophet so certainly Allah can send the miracle but they do not know okay and right away look he gave them a miracle just to show you that, that how silly Muhammad is uh, every every uh, creature in this earth fly with his wings or walk with his feet they are nations like you and they have a book what the heck mr pig he have quran this is why if you go to the hadith if you remember even monkeys are muslims do you remember the hadith where uh, uh, a monkey she committed adultery for cheating her husband And this is why I will never date a monkey. They, they are cheaters. I was thinking about it, you know, because atheists, they say we and monkeys, we are ancestors. I mean, if they are, we are, if we are ancestors, I mean, it's possible. Monkeys are Muslims, and they are not only Muslim, they are Sunni. They are practicing the Sharia law. They are Taliban, and they are ISIS. A female monkey, if you have my book, Sex and Allah, you will see the whole story. Here the story is not really, they don't give you the story. The story is simply, there's a female monkey. Her husband, Mr. Chapanzi, was sleeping over her arm under a banana tree. Not banana tree, a tree. I mean, don't exaggerate, Christian Prince. There is no, Muhammad, he never saw a banana. Trust me, if he saw a banana, he would make a chapter about it. Anyway. So the tree, under the tree, they are sleeping and her, his head over his her arm. And then another young, handsome chimpanzee walked by and he hit in his chest like, hoo, 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 you know, and he have a nice banana in his hand. And this female monkey, she was tempted. I mean, all of us, we have to face it. All of us, we can get be tempted. I mean, not only monkeys. We have to be honest here. I mean, stop fooling yourself and be honest for once in your life to Christians. Muhammad here is telling the truth. So, uh, the female monkey, she took her hand, her arm, from under the head of her husband. Which always happened. I mean, how many of you... You sometimes you sleep in the arm of your wife, and at night she take her arm from underneath your head. Next time such a thing happened, you have to think about it three times. Why? Where she is going? Uh huh. Maybe there is a monkey waiting for her in the backyard. I mean, something wrong happening here. I mean, put put yourself in the shoes of this monkey. Anyway, I'm just advising you in case you are married. In case you never know. 
uh, this is why I advise you to read my book sex and Allah because you can le learn all the tricks women they can do including the trick of taking the arm from under the your head so brother if your wife she take her arm from under your head something very fishy there brother this is the tips for today let us see how many people will get divorced by tomorrow <laughs> So anyway, the story is simple. The, the female, she took her uh, arm from under the, the monkey. She went with that chimpanzee, and they did, uh, hmm, you know, da -da 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 -da, you know, I cannot say most of you are not, uh, not mature enough to explain to you what happened exactly. Uh, so I don't want to say the word which is haram to say, brother. It's haram, haram to say. <laughs> haram oh, Islam all of it is about haram and halal and the silly stuff the second you talk about something serious they are mute so they have sex together and then the female she came back and she put her arm under the sleeping husband the poor guy is still asleep he have no idea what his wife she was doing behind that tray but then the husband he started sniffing his wife I, I'm, I'm sure all of you you sniff your wife don't you I mean, normal. I mean, we are. And then he noticed there is a smell like, oh, what the heck is that? This is not onion. Oh, no, no, not onion. Uh, this is not zucchini. Um, oh, boy. It sounds like, is that a sperm? So he noticed that she had a sperm in her private part. And the monkey went so crazy. <laughs> and you know the language of the monkeys Muslim monkeys we have to be careful according to the hadith I am not saying you know this is what the hadith is saying she those are Muslim monkeys so don't take me wrong so those Muslim monkeys they gather together and the husband start explaining to them that his wife she cheated in him and they start sniffing her bum and the judge judge of Sharia law he said Allahu Akbar in the language of the monkeys and they gather Sharia law and they decide to stone her and Abdul was walking by. He said, I swear by Allah, brother, I stone her with them too. Now, for sure, this is a true story, and we cannot deny it. Actually, me myself, I saw the movie Tarzan, how the monkey, they throw the coconut. For you, it sounds like a coconut, but the fact they are practicing stoning to death. All right? I mean, you human are not smart enough to understand the nature and the act of, anyway. So coconut, I think they are throwing coconut in this case. But because there is no coconut in the Arabia, they have no choice but to use the stones. But trust me, if they live in the Philippines, they will use coconut because it's cheaper and it's everywhere. Anyway, so as you see, even animals are Muslims. That's mean Allah will, this is what the Quran is saying, it was Allah will to make all animals creatures who they are nation like you and they are Muslims. Let us continue with this madness. So Allah, he gave Islam to all creature. But the story did not, by the way, uh, there. Look what the Quran says. Those who reject our ayat, ayat, our proof and evidence. Look, look at this madness. How you say our proofs, if you say it, Allah can send the proof, but you never send one. Just the verse before it. They are asking you for a proof. Do you see the stupidity, guys? Why not Allah send a sign down? And then he says to us, the one who refused his, his, uh, his signs. What signs? They are asking you for the signs. I mean, do you see the madness? Where, where is the signs? And then, by the way, here they says verses, lessons. That's a, that's a lie. The signs, it's about signs, a miracle. It says ayat are deaf and dumb and dark darkness in darkness. Okay, oof, 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 oof. Allah send them astray. This is a translation. Allah send astray whom He wills. Okay, hold on, hold on. Allah is the one who send them astray, and you are saying they are dumb deaf and in darkness but he is the one who made them dumb and deaf and in darkness so they will not believe in him don't you see it it says there allah send them astray 
by the way it doesn't say Allah send them astray it says you'd little who when you show Allah you'd little who Allah whoever Allah want he deceive him but anyway sent astray doesn't make it too much different sent astray is the same I mean who is the one who sent me astray Allah what does that mean it's mean I am I you know, look I, I cannot believe in Allah because Allah make me up to believe in Allah Are we following guys are we following if there's anybody don't understand what I'm trying to say with my funny English I mean this is crazy so Allah is the one who it's it is it's Allah Allah sent astray who him he will so anyone in the world is not believing Islam because Allah he sent him astray so look at this crazy stupid religion Allah sent us astray and then Allah will punish us because he sent us astray Muslims, be honest with me. Don't you love me? Do you love me? Do you? Do you? Do you hate me? Do you? Do you? Your Muhammad uh, is crazy. Mu you, mu you. What is that, man? This is Quran. This is the miracle of Allah. He speak like this. If we ask Zach and Naik about to explain this verse, uh, for sure Zach and Naik he will come with his own interpretation, uh, which is going to be fantastic, especially he's a doctor. He will say to you, Brother and sister, they're the person in the name of the Christian prince, and he always tried to make fun of the Quran. In fact, he's a stupid and he's an idiot. In chapter 6, verse number 39, he said, How Allah is going to punish us for being going at three. But in fact, he is the one who made us go a tree. I say to him, you idiot, are you going to question Allah? Allah, he do whatever he will. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Allah, he do whatever he will. This is the answer. Are you going to question Allah? Hmm? Nice to meet you, Zachary. Nice. Do we have any Muslim in the bushes? Anyone? Uh, I have no comment actually, you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, this is a crazy I wanted to convert to Islam, but as you see Allah will not to convert to Islam. It was Allah will to be to be Christian Prince It was Allah will to be Christian Prince so Christian Prince now he is a Christian Prince because it's Allah will That's something Chapter 6 39 hmm. do we have any Abdul another verse showing the stupidity of the author of the Quran say to this believer Tell me if Allah took away your hearing and your sight and sealed up your heart. Like what the heck? Allah, he sealed their heart. So all this drama because Allah, he sealed their heart and you are wondering why they are not believing. <laughs> Hello? Guys, imagine imagine you have a plumber and the plumber he seal your sink and then the plumber he shout at you he says why you blocked your sink you idiot you are the one who blocked it you idiot plumber so Allah he block your belief he sealed your heart and then Allah will punish you because he sealed your heart
Hmm? What do you say? I mean, this book in front of us is a kind of a comedy show. And I'm trying to be nice as much as I can. But I don't know what to say. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? Hmm? Any Abdul want to say something? All this chapter here is a shish kebab. You read from the beginning to the end, you learn nothing. Let us go and see different verses. All right. Why somebody he is a mushrik? You know, guys, what would the word mushrik mean? Anyone knows what mushrik mean? Let us see how many of you knows what we are talking about. What mushrik mean in Arabic? Nobody knows. Nobody knows, nobody know, nobody know, nobody, mm, nobody, nobody know, nobody know. Okay, mushrikeen simply is those who don't believe either in Allah totally or those who associate somebody with Allah. They call them mushrikeen, they will go to hell. Now look at the Quran or the wisdom of the Quran. Read with me please, brother. Chapter 6, verse 107. Had Allah willed, they had not been idolatrous. <laughs> Question, why Allah did not will? I mean, look at this. Why they are people who worship idols? Why they are not believers? It's Allah will. I mean, this Muhammad, his book will drive you insane. Why they are not believers simply because Allah did not want them to be believers. Now Allah, <sighs> he want to explain why they don't want to believe or they don't believe. But he explained it already, it's Allah will. Guys, who is the enemy for mankind? Supposedly it is Satan, right? For those who believe in Satan, is the existence. Satan, right? Look what the Quran is saying. In the same chapter, it says, chapter 6, verse 112. Thus have we appointed into every prophet an enemy. Shaitan. What? Allah appointed shaitan against his prophet. People, do you see what I am seeing? Let me change the translation for you because this translation sounds silly, funny. I don't know the language there. Oh, this is big tell, no wonder. I am stuck with this big tell. Hmm. And so we have appointed to every prophet enemies. Shayateens, devils, like what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is Shaitan appointed by Allah or he is a free? Guys, do you, do you hear what I'm saying? Shaitan is an employee for Allah. Who is the one who appointed Shaitan to be our enemy? Do you see it, guys? So shaitan is just an employee. If uh, if we ask the Muslims, okay, shaitan now uh, appointed by Allah. Can shaitan say no to Allah? I don't want to be an enemy to Muhammad or to uh, uh, to Christian prince. No, he cannot. So shaitan is a good person. Allah is the bad person. The real shaitan is Allah. Shaitan, he have no choice to to be or not to be. Uh, that's the question. We have, read carefully, uh, a Muslim, uh, sorry, I apologize, I forgot you are illiterate. You are illiterate like your prophet. Have you ever heard of a prophet is illiterate? 
a brother and sister. Today, I'm going to teach you science. I will teach you how the baby is created. And by the way, my name is Dr. Dakar Naik, and I am illiterate. You are illiterate, and you want to teach us how to write, how to read. You want to teach us about science. You want to teach us about uh, uh, embryo. You want to teach us about the sperm. I mean, that's so, so good to be true. Absolutely. And the reason, this is the miracle from Allah. I cannot read, but yet I can teach you. And I will give you an example. The other person, his name is the Christian Prince. He go on YouTube and hundreds and thousands of people, they listen to him. But the fact, he don't speak good English. It's a miracle of Allah, brother. He don't speak good English. And that's, uh, okay. Well, you get the point here. I mean, it's close. Yeah, so I, I must be a prophet too. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's, that's, that's true. So, brothers and sisters, brothers, brothers and sisters. You know, once I was in the Philippines and the taxi driver, not dry, dry, the bus, I wasn't the bus. You know, you know, we don't have the luxury to take a, a taxi. So we took a bus and the guy in the bus, he came and he said, sir, uh, which means pay me, you know, you have to pay in the bus. So I gave him the money. And then he said to me, uh, sir, I have to pay you back 44 pesos. I, I said, what? He said, 44 pesos. I said, say it one more time and keep the money. He said, 44. <laughs> I love it. How those Filipinos, they say the 44. And uh, he came to me again. He said, sir, should I say to you more than 44 and you pay me? I said, no, that's it. That's it. One time deal. That's it. You know, 44. So Muhammad with the 44 thieves, he come to us with the 44 lies and the 44 idea that Allah, he appoint 44 shaitan, so they deceive us. And then shaitan is the bad person. I mean, how you say that Allah is the one who appointed shaitan, and then you say shaitan is our enemy. Our enemy is the one who appointed the shaitan. Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? Allah appointed the 44 shaitan to be our 44 enemies. That means our real enemy is the one who appointed the shaitan, not the shaitan himself. Do we have any Abdul? No, no, Filipinos don't do that. No, I, I, no, this is in the in the province area, like areas like. Uh, uh, actually, I was taking the bus from Manila to uh, to Batangas. Okay, so I am assuming that this is like something they do in that area. For I, but I like it by the way. The forty-four. No, it sound a lot. The forty-four pesos is not even a dollar. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, brother. Do we have any Muslim have a comment? Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. What is the Muslim who's going to give you advice? By the way, if a Muslim want to call me, I can open a uh, pal talk for you. A knight of God, you're a Filipino? A sige, sige. Uh, uh, this is the word I learned in the Philippines, sige, sige. And I don't know what is that mean, Sige Sige. Everybody says Sige Sige. Be careful when you say Sige Sige. That's mean you agree. Do we have any Abdul? Oh, oh look how many people here from the Philippines. I'm I'm leaving, guys. Look like we are we have a Filipino here, and they will take over. Okay, uh, okay. I'm going to go and uh, no, hold on. Uh, Filipino guys, listen to this. Once I went to an area, I forgot the name. Uh, but anyway, the whole the whole street, there is a sign it's called, it says Bulalu. Bulalu. So I saw this is like a Bulalu city. <laughs> a while after, I asked a Filipino how we can take a bus for the Bulalu. Is it where? Is it Bulalu? It's where, what is that? I said, you want to eat? I said, no, 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 I want to go to the Bellaloo. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, I never saw a food so famous to the point it's in everywhere. So I thought really this is the name of the city, like a bolalu, bolalu. It, it, it turned to be a name of a food. And this is what happened to you when you are an Arab in the Philippines. Anyway, so the guy who was laughing, he said, no, sir, this is uh by the way, Filipino are very nice people and they are very polite, very polite. And always they, they, they speak to you, they say they call you, sir. They are very, really, very polite. I, I respect them. So he said, no, sir, it is it is a food. And it's really tasty, by the way. Uh, but I thought it's the name of a city, Balalu. All right. Try Balut. Yeah. And don't tell me about the Balut. The Balut is a different story. Once I was on the beach and there's a guy behind me was screaming, saying, Balut. I look at him. Like, who's looking at He's screaming at who? Balut. And then I said, hey, buddy. Come on, if Balut is here, should answer from long time ago. He said, do what answer? He said, you are calling the Balut? He's not here. He said, sir, I sell Balut, you want? <laughs> I thought it's a guy name or something, you know? Balut. Anyway, we go to the Balut of Allah because the Balut of Allah obviously is better. He lay a lot of eggs. Balut is an egg, for those who do not know. Anyway. <clears throat> Do we have any Balut Abdul here? Hmm? I mean, the guy, he gave me a headache. He stands just behind me. I'm the only one there. He keeps saying Balut. I mean, what's wrong with this guy? Obviously, there's nobody in the beach. He keeps saying Balut. I told him, he's not here. He said, who? I said, Balut. You keep screaming Balut. If he is here, he would answer you. You know? He stood just behind me, right behind me, and he did not leave. <laughs> it's like Jibreel, man. It, 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 it's like Jibreel when he came to Muhammad when he was delivered the chapter of Al-Fatiha. Anyone remember what Muhammad was doing? Anyone remember? He was doing poo-poo. Anyway. So do we have any comment, any Muslim? Why Allah he appointed shaitans against us if Allah is God? Uh, gold, uh, you want to call me? What is your name? Layas, you want to call me? Say yes. Do you want to call me? I will open a uh, pal talk for you. Are you already? Oh, okay. Well, I will go to uh, pal talk. Abdul, we are waiting for you. Please. Let me open my pal talk so you can call me. All right. Here we go. I am in pal talk. Call me, Abdul. Let us see how good you are. Text me and I will give you a call. Hmm? Yeah, you will use Pal Talk for calling. It's the same as Skype. The difference is it's better than Skype because Skype became crazy. I have like here, there is more control. Can you use WhatsApp? No, because if we use WhatsApp, we will keep saying what's up until tomorrow. Like I say to you, what's up? You say to me, what's up? And then I say, what's up? And then you say, oh, what's up? I say, uh, uh, up is Jesus, down is Muhammad. And what's up? So where is the guy who wanna call me? Are you going to call or what? My Skype is open. My uh, my uh, my pal talk is open. If you dare, any Muslim he wanna call me. My my pal talk is open. My name there is a Christian. Uh, uh, so they will post it for you in the text. Just add me and text me there. Uh, uh, word changer. We don't wanna change the topic, my friend. Let us maybe some other time. Because right now we wanna we wanna show how silly the idea of believing in in, in a cult of Islam. As you see, the, the Muslim, all, you ask any Muslim, they say to you, Shaitan deceive you, Shaitan mislead you, Shaitan is our enemy. But the fact, look, as so and so, we have appointed for every prophet enemies, Shaitans. Who is the one who appoint Shaitans? Allah. Uh, 
Elias, uh, uh, one more time you post such a thing in the text, I will, I will, I will block you because if you don't do it, I will give you 15 minutes to call me. Correct, guys. If you don't call me to do it, I will ban you from my channel because we don't want childrens here. So I'm waiting for you to do it. Otherwise, you will be the same as any Arab leader in the Middle East who keeps saying, "We will destroy Israel. We are going to throw you in the ocean." We are going, we will. This is, your, this is exactly what Allah do. Allah, look what Allah, he said to the Christian prince long time ago. Let me show you. Allah said to somebody, look like he's like a Christian prince, like me. Somebody was giving Muhammad a hard time from the Christians. Brother, brother, look what he said. Chapter 4, verse number 47 Oh, you, you into whom the scriptures has been given, believe in what we have revealed, confirming that which you possess before we destroy you and we erase your faces details and we curse you the same as the one we curse in the Saturday. So Allah, he made a threat. By the way, translation here is very funny, stupid. The translation, let me change the translation again. Again, this is a donkey big tail. I mean, big tail is the worst translation. Uh, let us see this guy. Hmm. Read carefully. Oh, who you been giving scriptures, Jewish and Christians? Believe in what we have revealed by Muhammad, confirming which is already with you. By the way, it says what is with you, not already with you. Before we efface faces by making them like a back of the neck without nose, mouth, eyes, etc. Brother and sister, I have to tell you the truth. Because I speak against Islam, brother, I have no nose. And this is the good news for you. If you invite me to spend vacation in your house, I cannot be nosy. So I have no nose. And I have no eyes. And by the way, right now, I'm looking at the screen using my ears. Look, look. You see? I, I'm using my ears. I have no eyes. I have no nose. I am not talking from my mouth. I'm talking from my belly button. So the God of Islam, he made a threat. If you don't believe in Muhammad right now, I will do this to you. Okay? Hello? Hello? Hello, and this guy and the Muslim they keep saying, Christian prince, we are going to teach you how to behave. A Christian prince, we are going to spank you. Your God could not do it. I still have my nose. Actually, uh, when I'm doing my grocery, I go to the ATM machine. I don't even use my fingers because I'm carrying my hands. I use my nose. It's really big, but not bigger than your prophet because he lie a lot. I have an Arabian nose, brother. All of us Arab, we have a very big nose. Alhamdulillah. Any Muslim? So we go back, we go back. I mean, why we are moving from place to place like monkeys? What's wrong with you? Okay. So Allah, he appointed shaitan against his prophet and against us. That means shaitan is a victim of Allah. Hmm? Any Abdul? You know, guys, there's one thing I'm happy I am not married because imagine if I am married and all those people they say to me, I love you. I mean, if I am married, I will be killed second day. I love you, CB. I love you, CP. So, guys, what if I am married? What will happen to me? What if I have 13 wives like the Prophet Muhammad? Hmm? And you keep saying to me, I love you. Do you love me? Do you? Do you? They will kill me. 13 wives. Because do you remember what happened to Muhammad when he had a fight over, you know, with his wife? Anybody remember? Let me show you this uh, verse. <sighs> you remind me in the old days when I used to have 13 wives. Brother, once upon the time, the prophet he had a fight with his wives to the point Allah himself is involved you know the Muslim they say uh, 
uh, there is a guy his name is George Bernard Shaw brother he said if the prophet was exist brother he can fix all the problems of the world in five minutes during the time drink his mo his, his his morning coffee and then by the way we look in the book where it's Bernard Shaw say that we cannot find such a book they fabricate an article they say George Bernard Shaw he said that but we cannot find and even they give you the page number <laughs> never never believe them saying anything about anyone time will come and I will die and they will say Christian Prince he said Shahada before he die yeah and I put my finger up don't ask me which one if you two wives of the Prophet namely Aisha and Hafza turn in the repentance to Allah it will be better for you your heart indeed is so inclined to oppose what the Prophet is a W likes but if you help one another against the Prophet Muhammad is a W then verily Allah what 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 hold on hold on hold on, hold on. the Prophet he have a fight with two women they are five foot tall and now Allah is involved to protect to provide protection to the Prophet listen then verily Allah is his protector is a protector Muhammad he need a protection from Allah against two of his wives and Bernard show he said the Prophet can solve all the problems in the world in five minutes in the morning he cannot solve a problem inside his house to the point he called Allah for help and not only Allah hold on Allah is not enough because the fight is so big and women are dangerous you know I mean come on married men they knew that I cannot ex give you example and Jibreel Jibreel is involved Allah and Jibreel what do you want is Jibreel have 600 wings Allah and Jibreel is that enough no the fight is bigger than what you thought Allah and Jibreel and righteous every righteous believer among the believer Taliban Isis Al-Qaeda Takbir Hamas all of them they will join the fight Allahu Akbar defend the Prophet come on and then furthermore furthermore are you kidding me mr. father yes furthermore brother and furthermore the angels are his helpers what the heck all of those to fight with two women what if I mean if only two women are involved and this is needed to fight them what if their mother-in-law they join the fight I mean who's left in this universe will not join the fight look look hold up brother brother two women Aisha and Hafsa fighting with the Prophet the Prophet he gave him a threat from Allah Allah is his protector okay verily Allah is his Mawla which means his Lord master protector etc all the list and Jibreel and every righteous believer among the believers the Muslim they say we are 0 0.4 1 1.4 and the number is a uh, you know uh, uh, next week they will say to you we are 2 billion just wait uh, so 1.4 billion they will join the prophet fight against his two wives and furthermore the angels are his helpers all of this too I am a truly truly that Muhammad was a very self-confident and a strong character man I mean it's obvious think about it can't you see it isn't it clear by the way what is the potato he said you want to call me and my my pal talk is open what happened hmm anyway he is waiting for Allah and Jibreel and every righteous believer and further or all the angels to come and debate me with him anyway guys are we having a good time are we having a good time who here like uh, like our channel who here like it and who don't like it be honest let us make an Arabian uh, democracy vote 
In Arabia, brother, we are the first people who created democracy. Al Qazafi said, the president Al Qazafi, he said, the word democracy is coming from the word democracy, which means bring the chairs. You see, even that it's stolen from us with Arab Shakespeare. He is a Sheikh Isper. He's an Arab. I mean, <laughs> I'm sick of this lies. They say the Western they did and the Western they did. It's us who did everything. I mean, we do everything. Everything it is made by us. I can prove it for you. Can you have Quran like this? Here we go. I mean, look at this. Can you have Quran like this? You cannot. What do you want more? All right. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new, and don't forget to unsubscribe if you are old. Because you feel better, like you know, I subscribe today to a new channel. You know, like it's like a. Uh, I mean, don't you get excited when you get something new? So if you keep it, if you keep yourself subscribed, I mean, it's, it's old. Just unsubscribe and then subscribe again, and that will make you feel like, oh, I got a new shoes. Wonderful, and now we got a new prophet. His name is Muhammad. Unbelievable, and the prophet is genius. And look how he was able to silence his two wives. He told them, "Allah will take my side." I mean, so that's it. The wives they will say, "What the Allah?" Had. He put Allah in the he put Allah in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, true story. Any Abdul? Anyone? We go back to zero. And so we have appointed for every prophet enemies shaitan. Hmm. Mm hmm. For every prophet we appointed shaitan. By the way, it doesn't say shaitan, it says shayateen, which means devils, satans. Hmm. What the purpose? Any Muslim knows? Was shaitan successful to deceive Muhammad? What the meaning of S-A-W? Uh, supposedly, this is in English, like it says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means Allah pray on him and salute him. Any Muslim knows what happened when Allah he appointed shaitan against Muhammad? What happened? Ah, uh, yeah, by the way, here there's something I did not mention to you. I mean, somebody he posted in the text. Uh, but thank you for, for mentioning that. Among the mankind and the jinns, did you notice this? Did you notice this? Did you notice? So, the Quran claimed that shaitan is a there's shaitan from the human and there's shaitan from the genie, which is very weird. Any Muslim want to tell us what is that, how this happened? Is shaitan is a human or he's a genie? Because here it says, Shayatin il insu a jinn. This is a chapter 6, verse number 112. <coughs> yeah, too much hashish, my friend. Any Muslim? Why Muslims are not uh, involved? I mean, come on, you Muslims are Muhammadan. Hmm? We showed you that Allah is the one who lead people astray, right? But not only that, and look, Allah, He want to prove to us something. He says to us, Verily your Lord. Is he who knows best who astray strays and whom he is from his way and those who I mean this is unbelievable. What is that? Do we have any Abdul wanna say something? 
read other verse here I mean the same I mean the same chapters is full of madness and whomsoever Allah will to guard he open his breast to Islam my breast is opening and whomsoever he wills to send astray he make his breast to close and constructed <laughs> Okay, <laughs> unbelievable. I need to lose weight. Seriously, I need to lose weight. I mean, I'm laughing a lot. Since I start reading this book, I mean, thank God I I don't get uh, overweight so easy. Otherwise, I would be like an elephant by now because laughing will make you, you know. I mean, look at this. Allah, brother, whoever He wills, He guide and He open His chest. And Allah, whoever he don't want to guide, he closes the chest. Okay, Muslims, what is the wisdom from this verse? Brother, what does that mean? So Allah is the one who may misguide us. Allah, the one who may guide us. We got that. Now Allah, he guide us and he open our chest. Anyone knows what's, what's going on? By the way, the Muslims they made they made an article about this verse saying this is a miracle, scientific miracle. According to studies, when you go up to the mountains, you feel heavy breathing because your chest will be narrow. The fact this is stupid, this is not true, it's the opposite. When you go to the sky, your chest will go bigger why because there is less pressure but you will not feel good because you there is no enough oxygen correct guys so the feeling of not being comfortable is not because your chest is getting smaller but because there is less oxygen in the mountains and you are giving a lot of effort to climb the most time they try to make a miracle about of it in fact, it is the opposite. Do we have any Muslim? <sighs> hmm. Maha el Wasim. Maha al Wasim, she is a Muslim, she is a welcome in our channel. She something said something. We need to make a comment about it. And thank you for those who made a donation. Mr. What uh, his name? Uh, uh, guys, I apologize if I don't say thank you because I know you are not waiting for me to say thank you. Charlie. Uh, Maha. Maha, she said. Andrew, first let me say something. Let me say that. In Islam, we Muslims and Christians both believe in Jesus the son of Mary I understand your English is not so good but it's okay um, so am I and we believe in Jesus if you think we are done I don't know what that mean however as God's prophet not son first of all Maha no you don't believe in Jesus the son of Mary you believe in a guy his name is Isa his uncle is Musa and Aaron and his grandfather his name is Omron therefore Maha you don't believe and you do not know who is Jesus because our Jesus is not the nephew of Moses neither the nephew of Aaron and his grandfather is not Omron and we never heard of a guy his name is Isa. And if we search the whole Quran, we will not find the true name of Jesus there, which is Yeshua. Where is Yeshua? Who is Isa? Isa, the son of Mary, his grandfather is Omron. Who is Omron? He is the father of Moses. How Moses and Omron they became son and father? And Mary is their sister. Even the Quran says, Ya Ukta Harun, O oh, sister of Aaron. Sister of Aaron? Mary is the sister of Aaron? The Muslim, they say to you, brother, 
in the old day brother they used to call them by their ancestor the good ones but but uh, Musa is not from the ancestor of Mary he is from different tribe the ignorance of the Abdul this is number one number two Mary and uh, 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 Aaron and Musa they have the same father name that's why he called it sister he thought Muhammad <laughs> Anyone knows why Muhammad he got this uh, wrong uh, thing? Who knows why? What is the reason Muhammad he thought Mary, the mother of Jesus, is the sister of uh, Aaron and Musa? The answer is very simple. The Bible says that Musa and Aaron they have a sister her name is Maryam so Muhammad the naive the false prophet he thought that this is the same Maryam as simple as that so he said oh sister of Aaron look here in the translation it says oh sister of Aaron they put the like it doesn't say that this is a false translation they try to protect Muhammad and they lie in the interpretation in the translation so Muhammad obviously he is false prophet he could not even quote little thing about Moses a little thing about Jesus a little thing about Abraham and little things about all of them not a single thing Muhammad he quote about names of people who came before him it was accurate are you there, Maha? Georgie, you are late. Guys, Georgie is late. And because he's late, he had he had no chance but to donate $1.99. And I will tell you why he did that. Because if he donated $1.89, he will not be able to enter the classroom. <laughs> Welcome, Georgie. Hey, guys. Why you are late? I mean, set your alarm. Do you know what is the best way to know to have an alarm? Anyone knows? What is the best alarm? No, no nobody knows. Hmm. Let me. Okay, I will give you a tip for today. Second tip. The first tip. Anyone remember? If your wife she is sleeping underneath, in, 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 uh, sorry, underneath of you. I mean, this is stupid to say. Not even polite. But it might happen. But anyway, if your wife sleeping next to you and her arm underneath of your head and she took her arm, it means she is going to do something. The second the second tips is the following. Uh, <clears throat> is this. Oh, we have a warning for a tornado. Oh boy, we will lose electricity. My house will fly. <sighs> Guys, in the other day, we have a very scary tornado. And I'm telling you, trees is all over. Crazy. The only place never even touched, it was my place. All the neighbors, they have their fences destroyed. Their plant is gone. I mean, it's crazy. Here, Nothing happened. I did not even lose electricity. Unbelievable. Man, thank you, God. Now look here. Abu Huraira reported, Allah Messenger said, when you listen to the crowing of the cock, ask Allah for favor as it sees an angel. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at this. Here we go, the alarm system. So, if you have a rooster and he starts saying "cuckoo, cuckoo, 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 cuckoo," that's mean he saw an angel. Be happy. Open the windows. The angel is there. The breed is coming, brother. But if you hear the brain of the donkey, that's because he saw a shaitan. Okay. When you decide to take calls from Muslims on Skype, that was a unique sitting point. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't do sitting here. Get get lost. 
if you're excuse you want to call me you can call me in pal talk is the same as Skype it's for free get out of here I mean look at their deck out their silliness no I'm not going to use Skype because Skype is flooded I open Skype is like crazy pal talk there's a control uh, same time look what the Muslims they do we uh, well, I, I use a proxy to protect my IP location right so what they do they get that IP and then they start flooding with those attack and then we the, the, the company they will disconnect that IP and then I will lose connection so they will use their Skype to know the uh, the proxy IP so they can flood the the gateway which is the company I am getting the proxy from so we know your trick and you know how stupid you are Now, and Mary had head scarf. Maha, uh, guys, look what Maha she said. Mary, she had a head scarf. Maha, can you tell me why Islam created head scarf? Why you Muslims have head scarf? Scarf. You said you just said Mary, she had a head scarf. Do you know that your prophet he ordered his wives to have head scarf because Omar al Khattab was looking at the ass of his wife? Not because Islam come with the scarf. At that time, scarf, all women wear it because there is a dust, there's dirt, there's a sun. This is the only protection. And even men, they have a scarf. So don't be stupid. Don't every Muslim man and every desert man and everyone who live in the desert, they have a scarf in the top of their head? So this is a silly argument. You're a prophet. He did not order women to have a scarf actually Omar al Khattab he asked him many times to do order the women to cover themselves Muhammad he don't want that and then Muhammad he had to agree with Omar because Omar he was pressuring him and harassing his wife let us see what your prophet he said this is Sahih al-Bukhari Sahih al-Bukhari confirmed that Muhammad he copied Quran from Umar ibn al-Khattab and Umar said my Lord agreed with me in three things Do you see it my Lord agreed with me in three things number one number two number three it was Umar who ordered the wives of the Prophet to cover themselves and the reason is Muhammad he was a potato and Umar was making fun of his wife even looking at their bum and let me show you the hadith if we go in the hadith, you will see so that she went out to do poo poo. Omar, because he's a very nice person, he was looking at the ass of the prophet wife and he said to her during the time she was doing poo poo, Arafnaki ya Sauda. Ah, we know you, Sauda. Ha ha ha. Do you see it? Uh, Paul, uh, Paul, the women, they say the women, they should cover their hair. No, Paul, in the same chapter, you will see, he says that the hair is the cover of the women. The same chapter. However, even if Paul, he said that according to you, that's mean your prophet is copying from Paul. Thank you. And as you see, you're a prophet. He don't want to cover his wives. It was Umar al Khattab who keeps saying to him, Ask your wives to observe veil. Obviously, this hadith here claim that the wives of Muhammad were lousy, where their stomach and their belly and their breast is coming out. And Umar trying to be more decent, maybe, than Muhammad. Muhammad, you don't care. He keep asking him, Allah Messenger, ask your ladies to observe veil, but Allah Messenger did not do that. Can you answer me? Tell me why he did not do that? Any Muslim can tell me why he did not do that. Who is the one who made Islam have a veil? Allah or Umar al Khattab? It's obvious it is Umar.
Any Muslim? Am I lying, guys? Or the hadith in front of us, what do you want to say to me? This is weak. And when the women, she went out to do poo-poo, look how filthy this Umar. He says that during the night, they go out for poo-poo. Omar, he said, ah, we recognize you, Sauda. Anyone? By the way, I have only 25 dislikes from the Muslims, which is very disappointing. I mean, come on, I'm a Christian prince, and only 25 Muslims dislike this video? I mean, this is a shame. Hold on, let me open the window and jump. I, I'm, I'm really disappointed. Only 25 Muslims dislike my video? What's wrong? Hello? Now we have 27. That's nice. Okay, 27. Come on, Muslims, do something better. Come on, 28. 20, come on, Muslims. Come on, 28 only? I mean, come on, I should have like 100 that dislike. Like, come on. I mean, I'm really what I would go, what I'm going to tell my mom now. I will tell her I have, I have only 28 dislike. She will not believe it. At 30. Now it's getting better. Like, come on. What about Omar is spying at the ass of the prophet wife? How many dislike you will give him, or how many like you will give him, Muslims? <laughs> Brother, we are Muslims. We have a scarf. It is not you who have a scarf. The Prophet, he don't care. But because Umar al Khattab, he forced him. And even Muhammad, he copied exactly the same words as Umar. He said, My Lord, he agreed with me in three things. And one of them, women should cover. Do you see it? Would you tell us who is Indonesian scholar? I never met an Indonesian scholar. There is Indonesian scholar. Do you have an Indonesia? Someone is a scholar. That would be funny. I mean, I never saw a scholar who's an Arab. A scholar is an Indonesian. That would be funny. Uh, I I heard of Zakir Naik, which is very stupid. I mean, if this is if this is what the scholar is, I don't know what what Booger is. If we ask Zakir Naik about this, what Zakir Naik will say, brother Sitter. Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah bless him. He said, Allah he agreed with me in three things. And I told the Prophet, order your wives to cover themselves because they are throwing their ass and their belly bum. And we look like Hindus. And you know, the Hindus, they throw the women, they throw the belly bum. And this is haram. So Umar, brother, he said to the Prophet, brother, Prophet, order your wife to cover their belly bum and their nipples because their nipples are coming out. And the prophet don't listen to me. I told him for the time. The prophet don't listen to me. I told him third time. The prophet don't listen to me. And then Allah he listened to me. So Allah he agreed with me in three things. Thank you very much. What is that? It's not the prophet who ordered his wife to cover their belly bum and their nipples. It was Umar al Khattab. The proof in front of you, the reference in front of you. I have nothing to do with it. Hello. And you know, like when Zach and Naik he speak, you see the, the Abdul, their mouth is open, like, wow, brother, he is so smart. Eww. Mean, how he come with those answers? Who do you need my voice like Zach and Naik? I can make any voice I want. I'm gifted, brother. <laughs> I make Zakir Naik because he is the most funny, famous idiot. But all of them, I answer me, show me, answer me, silence me. But I don't do that because that will make sound like a gay, you know, like a Mimi Hijab. Answer me, silence, and move your fingers. Like I, if there is a camera, it would be nice. Like silence me, unbelievable. 
Who is a Muslim wanna silence me? Answer me. Hmm? Any Abdul? My friend, if I leave my toes in a place where Zakir Naik is there, my toes will win. My toes, not my nose. And here we go. Where are they? Who is the Muslim wanna call me right, right now? We have you have no excuse. You wanna call my 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 pal talk is open. Hmm. Let me show you that my pal talk is open, so you have no excuse, brother. You see it? Pal talk. Pal talk, pal talk. What are you gonna do? You see it? This is Baldock. Here we go. Christian Prince is online. Call me. Silence me. Debate me. Okay. You want to call? You have no excuse. You know? Call me. You can send me an, an uh, ad, and I will add you, and we, you know, I will call you. Hmm? We go back to our, do we have enough about uh, the shaitan uh, appointing appointing uh, Allah appointing shaitan I mean that's something well, why Allah appoint shaitan hmm And by the way, I mean, not even a single name in the Quran is it true. Okay, look at look at this. And we said, "O oh, Zechariah." The Arabic name is funny. And then his name will be Yahya. Who is Yahya? Who 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 is this guy Yahya? Where even the name is coming from? Ad. You, you have, he have how, how I can add, you know, he have to text me so I can call him. Are you a Muslim? Don't, don't tell me, call me if you are a Muslim. Send me a message in, in, in Pal Talk and I will text you back. I'm not going to look for you, you look for me. Do we have any Abdul? Hello. Hmm. Let us see some other verses. Nice verses. Nicer, nicer. Hmm. Ba, ba, ba. All right. Hmm. What else we will show you? Oh, hold on. In chapter 4, verse number 88, uh, uh, no, so it's chapter 4, verse number 60, it says that the shaitan, he is the one who misguide you. Guys, does it say that? Read it. Just to show you the Islamic deception in the translation, this is the word yudullahum is the same word the Muslim they use when they speak Allah do when yudullahum. Why here they translate it as mislead? Do you see the do you see the, the, the hypocrisy? The same Arabic word here translated as mislead. Why? Because it's about shaitan. When it's about Allah, they say lead you astray. But the fact it's the same word. Now, look, there's verse confirmed that the one who mislead you is shaitan. Mm -hmm. But look, I mean, this is crazy. Other verse saying the one who mislead is Allah. Read carefully with me, brother. <clears throat> um, we will take you to which verse? Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Which verse we will take you? Hold on.
Yeah, the same chapter actually. Let us go to the same chapter. We showed you verse number 60. Huh? What about we go to like 88 or 80? Let us go to 88. The same chapter saying Shaitan is the one who misguide you. And then the same chapter says the one who mis misguide you is Allah. Do you see it? Are you going to guide? Are you going to guide the one who Allah he deceived him? He whom Allah sent him astray deceived him. Nobody can give him the correct. I mean, this translation is very stupid. Let me try. It must be big tail. This big tail is a donkey. Literally, is a donkey. I mean, why? Why this page is stuck with big tail? I open it. It come to big tail. Read with me. Allah says. <clears throat> Allah has cast them back to disbelief. Who is the one who cast them back to disbelief, guys? Who is the one? You Muslims, come on. Only 30 dis uh, dislike. I mean, I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm really upset. Only 30 dis dis uh, dislike to Christian friends. What I'm going to tell the shaitan? Shaitan, he will be like disappointed. According to Muslims, we are working for shaitan. But according to Allah, Allah is the one who appoints shaitan and he is the employer. <laughs> Listen to this. Allah has cast them back to disbelief because of what they have earned. Do you want to guide him who Allah has made him go astray? What? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, this is the most silly, stupid verse and ever. Because think with me. Uh, sorry, Muslims, don't think. It's not good for you. It's not healthy. A uh, Christian, think with me. If Muhammad should not guide the one who Allah sent astray, which means the one is lost, Muhammad is sent to guide who? You know what I mean? Guys, let us compare what Jesus said to, to this verse in the Quran. <clears throat> Anyone remember something the opposite Jesus said? He said he came to who? He said, I came to the sick. I came to the sick or the sick. Muhammad, God, saying to Muhammad, Are you going to help the sick? Which Allah made them sick? I mean, this verse make me sick. Muhammad here, he claimed that Allah told him, Allah speaking to him, saying to him, Hey, Muhammad, what are, what's wrong with you? Are you trying to guide those who Allah deceived? But this is against the logic of all what Muslims they claim that Islam is religion of guidance Allah he sent the Prophet to guide us okay Allah sent the Prophet to guide us but yet he don't want us to he don't want him to guide us to the point he's saying to him are you going to guide the one who Allah misguide how that can be let us see and hear some beautiful words words of wisdom of our Lord the Messiah the Christ our Savior and compare between this garbage and the amazing teaching of Christ and how in the world somebody believe in Muhammad mark 2 and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noised that he was in the house and straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the door and he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, and reasoning in their hearts, 
Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. And he went forth again by the seaside. All the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for they were many and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I mean to that. So here you notice, how that the message and the teaching of Christ is totally the opposite. Muhammad fabricating Quran, saying that Allah told him, are you going to guide the one which Allah misguide? Jesus said, I came for the sick, not for the righteous. Because the righteous is already righteous. I mean, this is this is wisdom, right? This is wise. So imagine you call the ambulance and you ask the ambulance to treat the one who is not in bad shape. That would be stupid. You know what I mean? So if Muhammad is it's not his duty to guide those who misguided, so what he is for? To guide the one who is guided? Are you getting my point, guys? If Muhammad is not sent, according to Muslim, he is a messenger, a mercy for mankind, okay, to what? To do what? To guide us. But this is the verse, say the opposite. Uh, Muslim uh, proper, we are playing here. We go, why don't want to answer about this? We can go about anything you want, no problem. But why you are jumping the topic? Why the Muslims we talk, we call, we talk about cucumber, they want to talk about zucchini. Are you saying to me you're ashamed of this one, but you are proud in different verse? Hey, Abdul. Are you ashamed of this verse to the point you want us to change the topic to talk about a different verse? If we should not, and if it's Muhammad, it's not his duty to, to, to guide those who are misguided. So who is going to guide them? No one. Because Allah is the devil. Allah is the one who appointed shaitan as enemies for Muhammad and for mankind. So what Islam for? Islam for those who believe. But those who believe, they do not need Islam then because they don't need Muhammad. They are already believers. This is a chapter for verse number 88. Christ is Lord. I mean, bro. 
Anyone want to say something? Do you receive any death threat from Abdul? A uh, death threat for me, it doesn't work no more because they notice it's psh, this guy, he don't care. You see, death is the last thing I worry from. Honestly, I go to places nobody goes. I do things maybe nobody does. I made a seminar. Do you know the, the city uh, where the ISIS they occupy in the Philippines? I made a seminar there. All the Christians, they told me, don't go there. This is ISIS territory. I did a seminar. I made fun of Muhammad in the heart of that city. My friend, I'm a believer. And this life is just a journey. Die to now, die tomorrow. I actually, I pray to the Lord to make my life shorter. Because who, who, who is better to be with, better than him? Why I want to live uh, long and long for what? You, you see, there's a there's a there's a monk, Christian monk. He was dying, and they brought the doctor for him. And the doctor came out and he told the other monks. He said to them, "Your brother, he lost his mind." I think they said, "Why?" He said, "I told him that you have a few hours to live," and he have a big smile in his face. So they said, "Why don't ask him why he's happy?" So he went. He said, if you can't talk, I don't know. Why? I told you, you will die in a few hours. Why are you are happy? He said, son, I'm I'm serving the Lord all my life to meet him. And you just told me in a few hours I will meet him. So for us, death is not a threat. Will never be a threat. Our Lord, the Messiah, he overcome death. Whoever believe in me, he and he die he will live they are the living dead we are going to live forever jesus said let the dead bury the dead whoever drink from my water will never go thirsty i am the alpha i am the omega so my friend don't ever fear death those who fear death by the way they have no life because they are afraid always doesn't mean that you should be stupid no but don't fear because fear is your first enemy your worst enemy you will not enjoy anything in life imagine if somebody he fear germs he cannot put his head in the pillow because he's so weary there's germs he cannot even shake hands there's germs you can't go in the I mean you cannot do anything because you have fear fear is your enemy how many of you saw a cockroach scaring a woman and she jumped in the top of the chair I'm sure some of you saw it right a woman she saw a cockroach and she jumped it's a cockroach it's cockroach do, do, do I see it nice the way I say cockroach I like it huh Cockroach. This is Arabian version. A little tiny cockroach. This is how Satan is for us. It's a cockroach. He's disgusting, yes, but at the end of the day, he is a cockroach. Once I was, uh, this is in the Philippines too. Today we mentioned the Philippines many times. But you know, in the Philippines, the cockroaches, they grow really big. And they are like proud ah, look at me so there was a cockroach climbing the stairs I was waiting for somebody and the stairs are so busy I mean like there's many people coming down it's like a public building and nobody's stepping in the cockroach and I was saying to myself this cockroach he think now because he is a hero nobody is stepping on him he didn't know because people don't want to make their shoes dirty you know what I mean guys for him, he thinks he's powerful. This is why they are avoiding him. But the fact he is disgusting. So if they don't step on you, Mr. Cockroach, not because you are powerful, but because you are disgusting. However, I step in the cockroach Satan every day. I mean to that? And the point of death threat is to make you live in fear and shut up. 
So if this is happening, that's mean they are a winner. You are a loser. The Lord, he said, the one who deny me, I will deny him. The second you stop saying the truth, you are denying the Lord. Never do that. We go back to our topic. So Muslims, if Muhammad, his job is not to guide those who are misguided or disbelieve, who is he going to guide? Answer my message in Pal Talk. I don't see a message from you. You should send me first an ad message, I think. You should search for my name. Maybe you did not add the correct name. This is how my name is. Let me show it to you in the screen so you can see how it looked like. If you want to search for my name, you have to make it exactly as it shows in the screen. Look how it is. Do you see it? All right. So be sure there's no space. There's some uh, people, they make a fake name, try to cl clone me. Be careful. All right. By the way, when I used to go and do live chat in Palto, you know, I open I open my chat room and the room will be full in a few minutes. I mean, people go crazy. Let me tell you about Paltok. Once I have a meeting with the Paltok co-admins, four co-admins and their boss, the head of the co-admins, they are the one in charge. They have a meeting with me and they said to me, you need to stop what are you doing? I said, what I am doing? They said, I, I said, I'm debating the Muslims. He said, you are not debating them. You are inflaming them. <laughs> inflaming? <laughs> I mean, look, look how cowardly they, they, they go. They go and make a big complaint to the company, he says to ban this guy. And actually, they banned me, by the way. They were successful. To ban me almost for 15 days and then there's there's thousands and thousands of christians they send emails and even someday they will they, will, they make a sue against the, the, the company because i did nothing wrong i'm not teaching hate i'm not teaching violence i know i'm just saying this religion is cult and i'm proving it by reference so why you ban this guy they had they had no choice but to get me back uh but look at, at their behavior they cannot answer you, they cannot refute you, so they try every way to take you down. So don't let them, and never give up. Never give up. Is he a Syrian? No, I'm not a Syrian. But I don't mind to be a Syrian for some time. Let me introduce my friend, my, myself to you. I'm black, blonde, African-American from Japan. I am Asian, I am Arab, I am black, I am white. My friend, I am the child of God. All of us, we are one family. Christ, he unites us. Ethnic is not really exist when you are a Christian. You think about your ethnic only when you are far away from Christ. When you are a Christian, you are a black, you are white, you are Asian. All of us, we are one, and there's nothing will divide us. Whoever you are, God, he made you beautiful. Who cares about your color? Actually, for me, I love to see different, like, you know, I, I go, I you know, I meet people from around the earth, and I found it amazing how God, he made us. It is something beautiful to be different. We are like different fruits. Every one of us have his own flavor in the table of the most mighty God. That will make the table more delicious and more beautiful. Never 
never be racist never be hateful and by the way even for the Muslims you have to be good you are a Christian you've been ordered if you if you want to be like him you have to do what him do which means what the Messiah did so the Messiah he just said I came for the sick and we just quote for you the verses correct I came for the sick so we as a Christians we have a duty to help the Muslims they need our help we don't hate them we should never hate them sometime you hear bad news terrorists etc still not don't let the devil tempt you to be a person of hate the devil always try to take you down if you fail into the trap of hate you became like them a hateful person and then you are no christian no more And love your enemy it does not mean give them hugs and kisses love your enemy is by saying the truth and the truth will set you free now Adam and Eve were black who said that to you <laughs> I mean people they come with the funny ideas Adam and Eve they were black you know uh, I I saw an article saying that uh, the ancestor of mankind is coming from Africa okay and that will make some people say is Adam and Eve were black hmm my friend let me show you how silly some ideas can be did you see anywhere in the Bible God mentioned the color of Adam and Eve Anyone can show me a verse where God he mentioned the color of Adam and Eve? Anyone have a verse? If God himself did not mention the color, why you mention it? That's mean for God this is not important. Correct? Otherwise he will mention it. If our God is racist, he will say, okay, white, I made you white. Hmm? He never mentioned who was white. You know, do you see anywhere describe if Jesus was white or black or Asian in the Bible? Nowhere, because it's not important. But guess what? The God of Islam, he explained how black people, they came to existence and how white people came to existence. Anyone remember? God of Islam he claimed and let me show you the reference oh man the Muslims they took it <laughs> oh it's okay it's here it's here I found it <laughs> I thought they took the translation off okay hold on look at this and we don't want to be like those people this is Muhammad speaking about how black and white came to existence. And I find it very disturbing and very embarrassing and very disgusting. Allah Messenger said, I hope the text is coming clear. Is it clear? Let me see if I can make uh, the page. Hold on. <clears throat> Can you read guys or it's still hard to let us zoom out a little bit all right Allah messenger said Allah created Adam when he created he had created him to create him and he struck his right shoulder and there emitted from it white offspring as if they were white ants so Allah how he created the white people he hit the right shoulder of Adam and they came white like ants and he struck his left shoulder and there emitted from it 
the black of spring as if they were circle he then said to those had emitted from his right shoulder go for paradise for paradise which means you go to paradise and i don't mind i don't care and he said to those who are emitted have been emitted from the left shoulder you are for hell and i don't mind do you see the racism here do you see the evil the god of islam muhammad he is saying that allah he created the black people from the beginning to go to heaven sorry to go to to go to hell So black people, according to Muhammad, and we will highlight it again, those who they are from the left shoulder, who are they? They are the black, left shoulder, black offspring. What Allah, he said to those who they are from the left shoulder, those who are emitted from the left shoulder, he said to them, you go to hell and I don't mind. Actually, in Arabic, it doesn't say, I don't mind. It says, I don't care. Wala ubali. And Allah created the white man from the left shoulder. Sorry, sorry, the right shoulder, sorry. The white man from the right shoulder. And they are, they came white as, uh, uh, white like ants. And then he says to those who they are from the, right shoulder for paradise and i don't care do you see it this this madness is not accepted in christianity that's false that's disgusting the black people they are beautiful people they are children of god the same as we are and nobody is better than anyone if you are a white man, you are no better than a black man. If you are a black man, you are no better than a white man. If you are an Asian, the same. All of us, we are children of God. This is why the, the Messiah, when he, they ask him how to pray, he said, our father, we belong to our father. Our colors is not to make us uh, hate each other and fight each other or we discriminate each other. This is this is from the devil. Anyone who discriminate any human being, he is associating himself with the devil not with God go to Asia beautiful people now for sure there's everywhere there's bad and there's good there's bad white there's bad black there's bad Asian but there's good and in all of them so you cannot you know but what some people do they judge by some or by few but who said that <laughs> You know, there's an ethnic group is does not have uh, bad. I mean, <laughs> that's really be, that be stupid to say, right? So, if you if you try always, when you see a person, you see a human being. But if you see a color, if you see just a color, it means you have a racism inside you. Try always to avoid the color. The color is a trap. Because the second you see a color, you don't see a human, that's mean you are into that trap. When you see a black person and you are white, he can be your best friend and maybe he can be better than your family to you. And vice versa. So we have to be careful and stay away from racism and not to be like Muhammad. You see the Muslim, they say to you, did you hear the last sermon of the Prophet? It's a lie, it's a fabricated. I challenge any Muslim now to show me an authentic source for the last sermon of the Prophet where he said, according to them, that there's no difference between black and white. How you say there's no difference between black and white? And look what he said. This is what Muhammad said. You know, and nothing wrong, by the way, to say, uh, like, okay, you are white, you are white, you are, you are Hispanic, Hispanic, so what? But don't make it a different, you know? I mean, life, life is good if we are all a family. Imagine if you have a garden, have only one fruit, just one. I mean, it's boring. 
We are the fruits. We have many colors, but all of us, we are fruits. Do we have any Muslim have any comment? But by the way, I love being an Arab, to be honest with you. It makes me unique. I go in the airport, everybody is looking at me. And then I start speaking Arabic in the phone, even though there's nobody in the phone, but it's just I want to get get it through. Hello, assalamu alaikum, brother. Yes, assalamu alaikum. Everybody hear me? The security right away, they come to me and they say, sir, and they put a circle around my ticket for a special inspection and bingo, in five minutes, I am done. Why I want to wait for two hours in the line for the security check just to speak Arabic? Hello, and right away they choose somebody after me who is redhead to make it look like we are not being elective or selective. You know what I mean? Eh, we know the game. So, okay, assalamu alaikum. Yes, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, brother. Okay, brother, call you later when I arrive, brother. Okay, right away they will come to you and you go in the airplane and you open your phone and you start reading in Arabic. The guy next to you or the women, she will ask the, the host, can you have, do you have any empty chair? And you will have the whole chairs around, I mean, the whole trip. What do you want more? It's really fantastic, brother. Hmm? Nobody want to sit next to me. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> uh, anyway. <clears throat> Uh, what we can say, do we have any comment from the Muslims? Anyone? Sometime, you know, sometime I face uh, like, uh, like somebody when it like he want to ask me, like, he want to know, like, where are you from? So, like, you say, you say to him, okay, I'm uh, from uh, New York. They say, no, 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 I mean, where are you from? <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Where, where, are you, where are you from? And I'm trying to avoid to say where I am from. Like, well, I am, uh, you know, uh, from uh, USA. Uh, yeah, no, I know. Where are you, where are you from? <laughs> oh, how lovely. How lovely. But to be honest with you, my favorite airline is the Chinese airline. Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why? A Chinese airline is the best. Nobody knows who took Chinese airline before. No, not cheap. You ask for water, they bring you beer. I almost get a drunk. I'm getting thirsty. I want to drink water. I say, can you bring me some water? She doesn't speak English. She go and she bring me a beer, big beer, Chinese, but it's very tasty, by the way. So I said, okay, well, what we can do? I mean, still, we, we drink something. We drank the beer. But I want a water. So I asked her, and I have a and the person next to me. I don't want to move old people, you know, like they are asleep. Can you have water? She go and she come back with the beer. This is a second beer. I said, okay, second beer. I'm not like, I'm not used to drink. I would get it drunk. Then third, I mean, third time, and we said, <laughs> I said, not beer, water, water. She went and she came back with different beer. Supposedly now I explain it. I said, not beer, water, water, not beer. And I'm holding the beer she gave me, not beer, water, water. So she went, she went and came back with different beer. I'm sure for those who like to drink, they will love it. <laughs> And by the way, they, they, they are good because, uh, uh, like for for me, you know, I, you know, for me, a small meal doesn't doesn't satisfy me. Like I eat like uh, like an elephant. Don't ever invite me to your house. You will be sorry. So when they bring me the meal, I ask like for a second, third meal, because it doesn't work for me. This small tiny thing. So uh, they don't mind. A different airline, they will they will mind. Yeah, it's it's all for free. I'm sure now many of you will go and buy in the Chinese airline. That's mean water. Any Abdul? <clears throat> Don't 
Don't worry. Be happy. Do we have any Abdu want to say something? Any comment about what we see in the screen? So now, until now, what we made, we made many conclusion about that uh, 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 shaitan, he worked for Allah, and we showed the proof. Uh, Allah is the one who misguide people. This one, my book is called The Deception of Allah. I don't know how many of you have the, my book, The Deception of Allah. But this is the main reasons I got such a name for my book. Because Islam teach that Allah he deceive he is that he is the best of deceivers Allah is the best of deceivers when I made my first book the deception of Allah the Muslim they start complaining and saying oh he's fabricating etc so in my second book which is Quran and science and depth the first maybe 15 20 pages I think it just to show them how they are the one is deceived about their religion not me with the proofs and reference which mean we double the proof just because of their complaint and nobody can really deny it nobody can deny can you muslim deny Who is a Muslim can deny that this is a true? That Allah is a, the God of deception from the Quran. After all, I showed you. You cannot. Prove us wrong. Let me show you this verse. Just uh, as a snack. Look at this. How God can be God and he say such a thing? How shall Allah guide people who disbelieve after their belief? Like, hold on. I mean, this is the most stupid statement. Allah guide not the wrongdoing people. So Allah guide who? The one who don't do wrong, he do not need your guidance. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. Allah guide not those who do wrong. Well, the one who don't do wrong, he do not need guidance anyway. I mean, I'm not doing wrong. Why you want to guide me? So the Quran is a very silly. It says, I find the Quran is a like low IQ book written by low IQ teacher. Someone suffering from mental illness and he's trying to present himself as a smart But he do not know how to do it Read carefully and laugh how shall Allah guide people who disbelieve so Allah will give it uh, Allah will guide who the one who believe <laughs> This is all is about so so that, that you are saying to, you say to us Muhammad he came as a messenger to guide mankind and he want to save you uh, uh, and etc and uh, Allah he want to say what uh, look at this guys the videos we make here is a priceless trust me because we make it in a very easy way for you to understand. I don't think there is one of you who is watching is not getting the point so easy, right? We are not just posting a text for you. We make it fun to understand and we make it fun even to, to, to hear this stupidity. When in fact it's not fun. I mean, this is stupid. And this is why we ask you, please, share the links with your friends, download the videos, share them everywhere because those can change the life of a person you might know. Muslims are trying to convert people to Islam. Those videos are helpful not only for Muslims, so they might leave this cult. What about your child, your son, your wife? Go and meet with some friends and they lie to her and they fool her and they tell her Islam is a good religion. And bingo, she became a Muslim or your son became a Muslim. What you can do about it then?
is going to be too late. So what we are doing is extremely important. It can change the lives of many. And we did, by the help of the Lord, change the life of millions. And I say millions. If you go and type my name in, in, in YouTube, you will see my videos all over. Sometimes me, myself, I get scared about how many videos I have. Even though I, me, myself, I delete my videos. But the glory to the Lord. People, they watch it and they will not be deceived. So our videos is like giving the flu shot. So your son, your wife, your daughter, you yourself, you will not get sick by the flu of Islam. All right. Tell us about the end of the world based on Islam. Islam have nothing to do with the end of the world. The end of the world, uh, you know, there's many evil, and Islam is just one of one of them. It's not the only evil. You know what? What the Lord He said. The Lord He says, "Be aware of false prophets who will come to you in the clothes of a, of, a, of, a, of a sheep." But there are wars, right? This is exactly what Islam do. Islam tried to present itself like you know, Islam means peace, but the fact it does not mean peace. It means surrender. It's the opposite. They lie even about the name. So they try to present to you Islam as something beautiful, but the fact it is a grave. You see, when uh, when somebody die, what people they do, especially rich people, they put a lot of marble and blah 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 and statues, flowers, roses. But it's a grave. I mean, it's a, just a grave. You put marble, you put dust, you put dirt. It is a grave. And Islam. Maybe they try to make it covered by marble by the money of the oil they have these days, but it is a grave And you cannot make it beautiful and we prove it every day Correct So I want you please to download the videos and share them and help me in this mission because this is a mission for all of mankind Not about me not about you Please help us so the Lord, He will. So you see, you know, when people don't want, uh, I mean, they they play like, okay, I don't, I heard nothing, I'm deaf. Uh, you know, Islam is a bad religion. I don't want to be uh, involved. If you don't do it, time will come and the disease will come to your house, and you will be sorry. You will be sorry. Will the Kaaba will be destroyed by Ethiopian? No, I believe strongly that the Kaaba will be destroyed by Muslims. The Kaaba through the history was always destroyed by the Muslims, and I believe at the end is going to destroy by Muslims. You remember the story of Al Qurtubi, right? Al Qurtubi he exposed Allah, he exposed Islam, and he is a Muslim. He took his army from Al Bahrain and he came all the way to Mecca and he destroyed the Kaaba and he was screaming in the middle of the Kaaba, saying, Hey Allah, where is your birds? And why he was saying, why, where is your birds? If you remember, there's a chapter in the Quran. It's called the chapter of the elephant. In the chapter of the elephant, the God of Islam claim, or Muhammad, that there is an army who came to destroy the Kaaba, and Allah, he sent his birds, F-16, and they throw rocks at this army, and they destroy it. So al qurmuti he proved to every Muslim that Allah is a liar and Muhammad is a fake prophet. And here we go, I am destroying the Kaaba. And he was screaming in the middle of the Kaaba after he destroyed. Allah, where is your birds? Where is your birds? I'm here. Islam today is the Islam of oil. The Saudi, the Emirati, the Bahraini, they pushed hundreds and billions of dollars to make Islam look better now. But this is will die soon, as much as soon their money die. You cannot make, you cannot buy beauty, for it is a fake beauty. It's like, you know, a, a, a woman, with my respect to women, they tr try to, to make themselves beautiful by beautification in buying a nice phone. So she take a selfie. And then all the wrinkles goes and blah 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 and then there's apps they will make their eyelashes longer like uh, uh, bigger than my mustache and then you know like uh, but it's fake i mean this is you're fooling who i mean why, why, why you're doing this it's fake it's not real you are fooling yourself fooling others i mean what the point you are not or you make and go and make a surgery 
so they start stretching their uh, their skin enter their belly button became in the top of their forehead but do you look even you don't look good it's fake it's like plastic actually it's plastic so Islam after all plastic surgeries of the money still is ugly and evil you cannot buy beauty you cannot and the beauty here we're talking about a face we are talking about a beauty a real beauty so Islam is going to collapse actually it is collapsing I just saw an article about the whole town do anyone remember Kobani who remember Kobani who remember the city of Kobani of you anyone remember it where the Kurdish were fighting Isis who remember it go and see the news almost the whole town became a Christian look Isis is gone the town became a Christian they are never Christians those this town never a Christian people are converting to Christianity as never before in the heart of Syria Kobani controlled that city practiced Sharia law it was the best way to make people see how 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 crazy how filthy Islam is they leave the devil leave the Lord is there and now the Muslim Kurdish their name is Ahmad Muhammad Ali they are they are Muslims the priest there in the church his name is Ahmad the priest in the church his name is Ahmad which means Muhammad <laughs> you believe it and he is the one working hard to bring people to Christ those Muslims those Muslims who you see them in the West they don't know what Islam is about let them live in their ISIS then they will see what Islam is about this is the real Islam you know like you know it's Alhamdulillah Bismillah this is not Islam they have TV at home they have etc they have they have, they listen to music they go to parties they their wife they put perfume they put makeup and they do I mean they don't know Islam they never saw stoning to death they never saw cutting hands they never saw cutting feet they never saw crucifixion they never saw people putting nails in the eyes of people in front of them what they have of Islam is a moderate Western Islam like the Western created a new Islam which is like okay they live live and live huh? huh okay this is not Islam you don't say the Billy bomb correctly why I want to say it correctly there is a guy next to my YouTube he is doing English class you can join him <clears throat> if you look at Islamic countries how many of them they want to practice Sharia law why Imarat why Imarat don't have Sharia law the answer is very simple if they practice Sharia law Imarat will be no Imarat why they don't want Sharia law in Syria what about Iraq what about Libya what about Algeria what about Morocco what about Egypt nobody wants Sharia law but for Muslims if you don't have Sharia law you have no you don't have Islam which means Muslim themselves they are saying we don't want Islam they want we want our version of Islam we want Islam okay we are Muslims but we don't want Sharia law <laughs> you know what I mean it's like saying we want we want Islam but we don't we don't want the teaching of Islam you go in the Middle East you see a woman she is wearing a, she is wearing a hijab if you look down her breast is coming like uh, I don't know what she is putting there like they are coming like uh, bombs and the jeans is going through inside her she is not wearing the jeans the jeans is wearing her so what the point of wearing this hijab and she have 10 kilograms of makeup a hijab and short skirt they don't want they don't want Islam they want just a name you know just a security because when you say I'm a Muslim nobody will kill you I'm a Muslim okay I wear hijab but then I go and do whatever I wish anyway guys I think we had enough for today don't forget to download the videos our videos will stay there for maybe 24 hours max and I have a video from yesterday if you don't download it go download it before we take it off I want to say thank you for being here. 
uh, can you explain Surah 111 next time Robert uh, uh, just remind me please uh, I we had enough for today so I want to say thank you for being here don't forget to download the video share them and I I, I, uh, I say thank you for those who uh, support us in every way in every mean donation uh, downloading uh, the books everything you do uh, is appreciated and may the Lord pay you back for your work and the Lord he pay you by the way in a very beautiful way not by sending money but by sending beautiful people in your way and this is the best payment and always the Lord he send me beautiful people in my way I don't have ugly people around me and when I say ugly I'm not talking about the beauty I'm talking about beautiful people whatever the word mean so the Lord always is good to me and I believe he will be good to you if the Lord is with me who could be against me we have no fear and we overcome the fear many of you are celebrating the Easter according to the Western calendar I say happy Easter but happy Easter every day our Lord is resurrected long time ago but for his remembrance he is risen and he is alive for me the Easter is a very beautiful occasion but it's not an occasion happening today it's an occasion we should celebrate every day for we have a living Lord who overcome death and he proved to us how much he loves us not only he can overcome death but he is a loving God not like the God of Islam who wanted to be a slave so Easter is we are being or we are going to be for some of us maybe they don't want to believe or for long they are they are refusing to believe is to be a reborn again reborn again is to be born again with the Christ as if you are resurrected as if you are dead and you are alive again whoever believe in me and die he will live that is the promise of the Lord and I believe in every promise he made so I say happy Easter for those who celebrate Easter and I want people to wait until the Easter of the Orthodox calendar come because there is a special occasion happening every year maybe as many of you do not know there's a light come in the empty tomb of the Messiah according to the Eastern calendar this is why I believe the Eastern calendar is better calendar for the Easter every year for 2,000 years a light came as a miracle from the empty tomb of Christ so look at the calendar for the Eastern calendar and you can watch live on YouTube how such an amazing miracle happened every year it is something nobody can explain it is something so beautiful it is a message from God to tell you I am here and I never never left you alone thank you very much for being here may the Lord bless you Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again take care bye-bye